What's going on guys, Waco here. Um, so I wanna to talk to you a little bit about like some of the most iconic watch designs uh, in the last 50 years. So I think it's kind of funny that if you, if you go back to the 1970s and all the kind of integrated bracelet sport sheet watches that emerged from there, such as the Patek Nautilus, such as the uh, Royal Oak from uh, Audemars Piguet, such as the 222 from Vacheron Constantine, like what would be incredible is to understand that like over 50 years later, <laughs> those watches are still the ones just smashing it through the market, right? Of course, the issue with those watches is of course they're really hard to get. So, um, you know, 5711 to 15202. Uh, and even now, Vashra overseas is going for above retail. Um, what's interesting is that that has kind of compelled people to kind of look around and see what else is available for them. And you'll see as a result of that, uh, Moser Streamliner is blowing up. You'll see that the Chepec uh, Antarctique has done very well for itself. And even um, uh, the Laurent Ferrier uh, Classic Sports, although I wish they'd make a non tourbillon version of that watch. But one watch we definitely don't talk about enough is the Gerard Perigo Laureato. So what is the Laureato? The Laureato was born in 1975, and actually it was interesting because Gerard Perigo, uh, throughout the first half of the 20th century, were serious badasses when it came to chronometry, right? They were the ones that were sending movements the most for these observatory trials, such as the ones held in uh, Neuchâtel. Why were these trials important? Because before the advent of electronic timekeeping, mechanical watchmaking really was technology that you needed to rely on for your life. Gerard Perigo was also not blind to the fact that quartz technology was emerging and was going to possibly be a dominant factor in watchmaking. And so in 1975, they released a watch with a quartz movement in it, and it was called the Laureato. And the Laureato had very specific styling. It had an octagonal bezel, it had a thin tonneau-shaped case, and it had an integrated bracelet, and it was a hit. In 1995, the Laureato was revived by the owner of Gerard Perigo at the time, the legendary Luigi Gino Macaluso, who, if you guys never had an opportunity to meet him, take it from me, was an incredible man and an incredibly nice man also. Uh, the Laureato stayed in, in the offer of Gerard Perigo for many years afterwards. It was, became a little bit butched up with the Evo 3 model. It even became the home of a three-bridge sapphire tourbillon, which is one of the favorite watches of Aura Montanari, who bought it at auction, but actually used to belong to our friend Laurent Picciotto. And that incident guys, if you're looking for a high complicated Laureato, I think that's the one to go look for. So one of my favorite versions of the Laureato is called the Laureato Absolute, which was launched a couple of years ago. And what is a Laureato Absolute? Well, if you think about what Emmanuel Guiette did for the Royal Oak to make it the Royal Oak Offshore back in 1993, that's what the Absolute means when you hear a Laureato Absolute. It takes the Laureato, which is an elegant watch, and makes it a little bit more aggressive, a little bit larger. It's 44 mm in diameter, but because a lot of attention was placed in terms of how to shape the case so it's super ergonomic, it's a very, very comfortable watch on the wrist. Well, why do, is it that we don't hear that much about the Laureato? Well, I think part of that is because in the last couple of years, because Gerard Perigo has gone through a couple of different management changes, the pathway for that brand has been a little bit nebulous, right? But what I can say, however, is that I really like where the brand is now, and I really like the leadership of the brand, and I like the people that are in the company. And if you look at the CEO of Gerard Perigo, Patrick Pernot, if you look at the person heading the product, who's Clemence Dubois, who's incidentally a person that I respect tremendously for her ability, and if you look at the head of communications, uh, Mira Anand, you've got three of the sort of most dynamic people in the watch industry right now, and they're making genuinely good watches. And one of them is the watch that I'm wearing on my wrist now, which is the Laureato Absolute Gold Beaver. It's a blacked out 44 mm titanium version of the Absolute. It's got a great kind of stealth hue to it, but then this is counterpointed by the use of uh, rose gold. Right? So where is the rose gold found? You find it on the applied logo, you find it on the indexes, you find it inside of the subdials for all of the counters, which are incidentally, it's not just colored rose gold, it's actually circular high polished plates of rose gold, which actually I think is really cool. It gives it this sort of loose, almost disco ball effect to it. Right? But the thing about this watch also is the strap. So Gerard Perigo has devised a technology where they take rubber and they actually inject it with actual 18 karat rose gold and that results in this watch. Uh, you know what the other thing I should mention about this watch that I really like is that the um, Absolute is also water resistant to 300 meters and has a screw down crown, which, you know, that sounds silly for me to say, but it's actually really deep water resistance for a non-diving watch. And you'll be surprised at how many really nice looking watches that are sports watches don't have a screw down crown. So I think that's another thing. Other thing I like about it is just the tactile quality of the watch, as I said, it feels great on the wrist, but even the pushers are super well resolved. Inside it, of course, is the venerable GP003300 uh, in-house chronograph caliber. I'm just making that up. I don't actually know if that's the name of the movement. Oh, is it? I ah, see, I got it right. 
So when did I start vibing with the Laureato Absolute? Well, it happened last year when I was looking through Instagram and I saw they just launched the Laureato Absolute Crystal Rock, which is made of a carbon fiber and fiberglass together in the case, right? It gives this really insane looking contrast that almost looks like marble, but it's actually carbon fiber. And I remember DMing Mira on Instagram and saying like, dude, is it just me or is this watch insanely dope? And she's like, dude, it's working super well. In fact, it's flying. And I was like, can I order one? And by that point, it was almost sold out. Fortunately, Patrick and Mira managed to get me one, and I now wear that watch very often. Why do I like that watch so much? The ergonomics on the Absolute are really good. Like, it's an incredibly comfortable watch. And then check this out. That deployment there, and I remember it was really funny, because I like messaged uh, Mira, and I was like, dude, like, I'm just between holes on your rubber strap, and it's so frustrating for me. She's like, are you not aware there's a fine adjuster? So actually, if you press these two buttons here, you can slide the deployment back and forth and micro adjust the, the, the size of the strap, which is perfect, especially if you live in a humid country like Singapore, where your wrist has a tendency to swell outside, then you go inside of air conditioning and get smaller, right? But it's just details like that that I think are so cool, and also just goes to show you how stupid I am. Anyway. Um, since I got the L'Oreal to Absolute, I wear that watch all the time. I love it. I was wearing it in spin class yesterday. I wear it when I'm walking my dog, but I can wear it going to dinner. And actually, one of my favorite places to wear it is this place called Sushi Kimura, which is my favorite sushi restaurant, right? Uh, why do I like, like wearing it to Sushi Kimura? Because like, when people go to that restaurant, they always show up like, with their watches on point because everyone's sitting like this. And then everyone kind of looks around and looks at each other's watches. And every time I wear that watch, someone says, like, dude, that's cool. What is that? I hand it to them. They're like, oh, GP, I hadn't heard of this model. Tell me a little bit about it. And you know, so I, I, <laughs> I actually have become a bit of an evangelist for the, the uh, Laureato Absolute. I think it's a really cool watch. I like this version because it's blacked out, but it's just got that little hint of like, you know, kind of gold, like looseness to it, I suppose, for, no, for lack of a better word. Uh, if you are a guy that likes a little bit of gold accessories, I think it's perfect, but you can also wear it in a really low key and kind of like, you know, s uh, subtle way as well. It also comes with just an all black strap if you want to put that on. Obviously, that black strap doesn't have the injection of 18 karat gold, but I like it on that strap, right? Uh, and it comes with both, so you have the choice between the two. Uh, if you haven't seen one of these yet, come to the Revolution Bar if you're in Singapore, try it on. Uh, I guarantee you, you'll dig it. Uh, and we are going to be selling these watches as well. Uh, the price of the watch in US dollars is 16200 So we've got the exclusivity for this watch for two months from the 15th of November. Come on down, try it on. I guarantee you, you'll dig it. And also, it's available, right? Um, and it's going to be made in a limited edition of 188 pieces. Peace, guys. Thank you very much.